Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share with you uh, a dream and a vision I was given about three days ago. And when I had this dream and vision, I wasn't 100% sure what it meant. And so yesterday, um, I was laying down, my lower back was hurting a little bit, so I laid down and I was contemplating some things, uh, one of which was Dana Coverstone's dream from a couple years ago where he was shown that a, uh, a hostile group took over the U.S. during a State of the Union address. I don't know if you heard that dream he had. And the man who typically symbolizes Jesus in his dreams told him that America fell in less than 250 years. So I was laying there doing the math thinking, hmm, that would have to happen before 2026. So I come across a video of a guy by the name of Randy Kay. You may have heard of him, I had not. And I was intrigued by the title of his video. And I, I was actually kind of skeptical of him at first. And I thought, oh brother, when did he put this out? And I, when I clicked on the video, it was 11 days ago. And uh, the title was 467 days to either the outpouring of evil or glory. So I went in and I started listening to the video and I realized pretty quickly he's the real deal. Um, you get a sense about people and I could just tell he was the real deal. He, is, he actually had an after death experience where he was with the Lord Jesus. And so anyway, he was given a prophetic message on Rosh Hashanah, September 15th of 2023 and basically a countdown. Well, as I was listening to his message, suddenly I remembered the vision and dream I had been given on October 1st. And then I realized what it meant and that what I was being shown was a call to America to come back to holiness. All right, so I wanna share the dream I was given and the vision, and then I'm gonna play a clip from Randy Kay's video, uh, his prophetic message he was given and I'll leave a link in the description box to the whole video. I highly encourage you to listen to the whole thing. Uh, but, all right, so to start, on October 1st of 2023, I was given a dream, and in the dream I was in a large place with my husband, and there were like these TVs on the wall, you know, like you would see in a mall, and there was a program playing, uh, it was about America's history. And I'm not sure how far back it went, 30s, 40s, 50s, but I remember taking note of the clothing that people were wearing, and they were wearing holy jeans, very similar to what you see young men and women wearing today. And I, I commented about that, and I said, I said, hey, those holy jeans are in style again right now. All right now, that's a play on words, okay? So I'll get back to that in a second. But then we were going to go to some type of a Bible study or a Christian gathering, and I had this scripture stirring in my spirit that I knew I needed to share with the church. And it was a scripture from Romans 12, 1. And it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. All right, so there you have holy, holy the holy genes, God's call to holiness. All right, now the holy genes... Um, again, that's a play on words, but G-E-N-E-S. Past generations have handed down uh, their faith to their children and their grandchildren, but it seems like this generation or the generation before us, it, it was lost on it. Ken Ham would tell you that as of the year 2000, America was no longer a Christian nation and that to evangelize Americans, you had to go uh, all the way back to the very beginning, defining what sin is, because there's no foundation of truth anymore in the hearts of the people, uh, especially the younger generation. So I woke up from that dream and I had a flash vision and I saw the U.S. flag and all these other flags in from other nations flying in the wind, but the U.S. flag was in the center, all right, meaning that the U.S. is a central focus on the world scene. And w the way America goes, other nations will go as well. And I did a little bit of research on the um, scripture that I was given to take to the church in, in my dream, Romans 12, 1. And I just wanna share a real quick 
excerpt from an article I found on it. And it was from hermeneutics, stackexchange.com, all right, hermeneutics, Dot stackexchange.com. So they break down the, the whole scripture like word for word and the word sacrifice, they give us uh, some reasons why Paul would have chosen to use the word sacrifice. Those who are in Christ imitate Christ and share his sufferings in this life. While their sacrifice is not redemptive in the place of another, yet it is to be for another as was his. Another reason, connotation of the blood and gore, the reader is called to a life of suffering in service to God. All right, the surrender of one's best to God, blemish sacrifices were not acceptable. Uh, another reason, total surrender, a sacrifice is not something that one gets back. The replacement of the Old Testament system where they offered bulls and goats, the readers were to offer themselves. Okay, so that's uh, one of the reasons Paul would have said as uh, to live a life of sacrifice before God. In summary, they write this, uh, Paul is commanding his readers to totally give themselves up to God. As Paul Washer points out in a number of his sermons, he does not here mean to restrict the command to just physical bodies, rather lest one make holiness something which is emphoral. He gives a concrete embodiment of the command to holiness. This is true in proper worship because the old system of bulls and goats has passed away. And because true worship to God is a holistic action of the man, God asks for total, non-partial devotion, body and soul. All right, so I just thought that was really interesting to understand exactly what Paul was saying in that scripture. That was the scripture that I was given to give to the people that I was going to go meet with. And I believe that is the scripture I'm intended to bring to you, the body of Christ, that God is calling us back to this place of holiness, to this place of sacrifice, where we give ourselves completely up to him, to his will, to his purposes. And like I said, I wanted to share uh, an excerpt from the prophetic word that Randy Kay was given uh, on Rosh Hashanah, back on September 15th, 2023, and just to help you to understand the consequence for this nation and for us as the church, if we do not act upon what the Lord is showing us he wants us to do, uh, coming against the evil, coming against the sin in this nation, uh, because if we do not, if we know there is something evil going on, if there is sin going on in this nation, in our government, in the church, wherever, and we don't even pray about it, then we are complicit with it, church. And there's, a, there's going to be a consequence for that. Like I said, I'm going to include a brief clip from Randy Kay's prophetic message that he shared. I will have a link to the uh, full video in the description box, and I encourage you to listen to the whole thing but I clipped about a five or six minute portion of the video where he is sharing specifically what he heard from Jesus in the dream he was given on September 14th, and then what he and his wife Renee heard from the Holy Spirit on September 15th concerning this, this 467 day countdown that he was told is coming. And when you do the math, that takes you right to December 25th of 2024. All right, take a listen. The Lord said this in our prayer as he revealed his message for you. He said, there is a new calling upon your life. And he's speaking about you. And there is a window in which you must enter your calling. He's speaking about you. A window has been opened to you in freshness and outpouring to walk into your new calling. For some of, some of it will be the birthing of a new ministry. For some, the birthing of a new career. And for some, the birthing of a new family. This is not a time of waiting. And he's speaking to you. For those who reject me shall reap what has been sown in the world. But those who follow me shall reap their harvest 
and a new blessing will be poured forth to them. I will take away from those who reject me to give unto those who work unto me. So there will be a transfer from those who have rejected God and what he has either ordained for them or his truth. They've rejected his truth. And what has been taken from those will be given to those, as the Lord said, who work unto me. I'm quoting now. Now, he goes on to say this. Many of my children have been bystanders to the defilement of their land. Now I am calling my people to rise. For some, it will be running for political office, and for some, it will be a time of supporting those and their government who support me, to volunteer for those who run for office, who promise to be obedient to my way. I am calling my body to wake up. They can no longer be silent observers. So now he's speaking to all of us as a body in Christ. Lord, Lord went on to say this. He said, I call you not to run from where you live. He's speaking to you again now. I'm, I call you not to run from where you live, but to change it. Grow where you are planted, where you live and work. Use that which I have given you to do good works, to pray and to decree my blessings upon your community and your nation. The hour is nigh when your opportunities will close, when either those who defy me will have their way because my children have surrendered to them or my children will no longer accept the defilement of their land and will pray and act through their deeds so that my blessings will pour forth to them. He goes on to say, the clock is ticking. I have heard the cries of my children. My angels have been sent unto the lands where my people pray. They will act as my people act. If my people surrender to evil, my angels will withdraw and the defiled angels will have their way. But if my people stand for my truth, my angels will defeat the defiled ones who battle in the unseen. I shall release, in those cases, my spirit. And then the Lord brought my attention back to the number 47 as he spoke these words. He said, you heard the number 467 speaking to me now. The counted days from the new year to the day of celebration of my birth. Do not wait for this day. And now he's speaking back to you. For it will be too late if you do nothing until then. Again, he's speaking to you. Now is the hour of your duty. Each day, and when I, by the way, I, when I say he's speaking to you, he's speaking to you and me both. But anyway, I go on. He went on to say, each day shall be counted until the end, which will be either the day of redemption or of evil poured forth depending on what my people do. And he goes on to say this. So why did I say by Christmas day of 2024, he's making it very clear now why he revealed that date to me and now to you. He says, it is because this will be the close of the year for that which has been planted will bear fruit in the following year. 
the next president of the United States of America will change the permanent course of the United States of America. The next election, the leaders of all nations will determine where I, whether I, God, will bless those nations. For if the people fail to choose those who, are, who honor me, then they will be devoured by the evil of their officials. There is one final chance. For those who choose not to be involved, they are giving their nation over to mine enemy. If my people bow to my enemy, it will be like the time of Herod, when I was born, when wickedness ruled while the light of the world brought truth and blessings to those who would follow me. But if my people uphold my righteousness, I shall pour my glory upon their nation and where they live. It will be like no other time, a time of blessing and healing and salvation. And he goes on to say, in concluding, now is the time of faith in deeds as well as prayer. If my children do not obey my truth, if parents send their children to institutions that defile me, then they defile themselves. For either my glory shall follow those who practice my righteousness or unrighteousness shall follow acts of unrighteousness within my body. End of quote. quote end of God's word to me and now shared with you. So as you can see, this is a very serious warning to us, church. We can't be standing on the sidelines. We can't be just observing the things that we see happening and unfolding in our countries, uh, in our communities, in our homes. We need to be participants. We need to be actively engaged in spiritual warfare, prayer, whatever the, the Lord leads us to do to combat the evil that is that is creeping in uh, in various areas of our nation. So uh, please take all this to the Lord in prayer. Like I said, I put, uh, I put a link in the description box to Randy Kay's full message. I encourage you to watch the whole message and to just be praying about what God would have you to do uh, in these very critical times, these critical days, uh, to make a difference and to be the light right where we're at for the kingdom of God. As always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.